Hi, my name is Jameson Blanford, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. Today we're going to be speaking about DFS, or Dynamic Frequency Selection. Now this allows you to use an additional portion of the 5 GHz band, provided you detect and avoid radar that's operating within that channel. So to de demonstrate Cisco's DFS capabilities, we're going to use a Cisco 1140 series, and we're going to generate a DFS event on the uh, channel we're operating on. Currently, we are operating on channel 132. So we're going to use Verowave's WT20 chassis and DFS pulse generation software to actually trigger a radar event and see if our access point changes channels accordingly. All right, we're in the DFS pulse script. Let's go ahead and kick off that pulse. OK, the pulse is now being sent. Now we'll move over to our Cisco Spectrum Expert display. And you can see right on the channel we are operating on, there is a DFS pulse that is operating within that band now. And actually, our access point is no longer operating within that channel. It's actually changed channels to avoid the source of radar and avoid uh, generating any interference with a weather radar system. Now we're going to go back to our Cisco uh, wireless line controller and check out what channel we actually changed to. You can see we've actually changed now to channel 112 to avoid that radar event. Now let's see what the administrator would see according to their viewpoint of this channel change. So now we're looking at Cisco's WCS. You can see we have a number of radar events that have happened over the past 24 hours. We're actually going to drill down into the access point we were using and see what it saw for the channel change event. So you can see the most recent radar event occurred. And we can even drill down further into that event details and get a viewpoint on what channel was used before and what channel the access point actually changed to. So you can see we changed from channel 132 to 112 to avoid that radar event and ensure we don't cause undue interference to any radar system. Now that we've discussed what DFS is, we're now going to showcase how DFS allows you to use the expansive 5 GHz channels and actually increase the capacity in a high density scenario. So we're going to use six different access points and 100 different clients in a 5,000 square foot area to showcase how adding DFS channels actually increases your 802.11n high density performance. To do this, we're using a mix of Apple OS X, Windows XP, and Windows 7 clients with a mix of Intel, Broadcom, and Ethereum chipsets. Now, we're going to go over to our wireless line controller. And as you can see, we're see running 7.0.98 code version. We have six different access points up and running and a hundred clients associated to our network. Now we're going to flip over to our channel display. And as you can see, all the different six different 1140 access points are on different non-overlapping 5 gigahertz channels. And some of those channels happen to be within the DFS band. So now we're going to go over to our Wave Insight tool. Now we're going to use this tool to actually generate downstream UDP traffic, 8 megabits per client, so that we can assess the total system performance. All right, let's go ahead and run that, that tool. Okay, it looks like the test has completed. We have a 100% pass. Let's scroll down to actually what the load was offered and what the actual achieved load was. So we actually offered a total load of 800 megabits per second. We were able to achieve 744 megabits per second aggregate to all these 100 clients. That's pretty good considering we are asking for 8 megabits per client or 800 megabits total. We were able to get almost 750 across the wireless medium. As you can see from the Cisco Spectrum Expert display, we were using channels 1, 6, and 11 in the 2.4 GHz band, as well as all the different other 5 GHz frequency bands. And clearly, within this DFS band, we were using that additional spectrum to give us additional 802.11n capacity for this 100-client, 
high density test. So now we're going to assess the total system capacity of Aruba system with their AP105 access point, which doesn't include DFS support. So let's go to our Aruba controller. We're currently running in a Aruba 6000 controller, Aruba OS version 5.0.2. And over on our access point screen, you can see we have six AP105 access points. And if we look over to our channel usage in the 5 gigahertz band, you'll actually notice that Aruba is reusing multiple 5 gigahertz channels. Now, why are they doing that? Because they don't support the DFS channels that provide you that extended and expanded capacity so you can run a higher density network. Now we're going to run the same Wave Insight test the same script against all 100 clients which are currently connected to the Aruba system now. Okay, it looks like the test has completed. Now let's take a look at Aruba's results. All right, out of our 100 clients, only 62% of them were actually able to pass the SLA. The other 38% actually received less than expected. And if we go down and scroll down to our total load, we tried to send 800 megabits per second, but ended up getting only 430 megabits per second through the Aruba system. So clearly delivering uh, a little over half uh, of the total bandwidth, but not quite up to par of what Cisco was delivering in this same scenario. Now if we look over to our Cisco Spectrum Expert display, you'll see Aruba is using channels 1, 6, and 11 in the 2.4 gigahertz band, and they're also using the lower channels in the 5 gigahertz band and the upper channels. But notice this uh, huge gap here, this huge range of blue, means Aruba was using none of the channels within the DFS band within the 5 gigahertz spectrum meaning that their spectrum constrained without those channels and they're needing to reuse other 5 gigahertz channels just to support more clients in this environment. So what have we learned here today? We've learned that DFS provides you additional 5 gigahertz capacity provided you detect and avoid radar within that band. Now competitors without DFS support like Aruba's AP105 our spectrum constrained and thus limited in the total system capacity of their wireless network. In sharp contrast, Cisco doesn't forget about spectrum. We offer full DFS support across our entire line of 802.11n access points to bolster your wireless line capacity and ensure you have the best performance in a high density environment.